Greetings and salutations. This is Frederick John. Today we're going to be talking about two of my favorite things, Elixir and Bitcoin. I have a website up here called Crypto Compare. We're going to be using their API in order to fetch Bitcoin prices from our Elixir application. Now, note that I'm not promoting Crypto Compare. I'm using the site because they have a public API which will allow us to send requests without the need to authenticate or use any API key. This will make things very simple so we could just focus on the Elixir part. If you don't know what Bitcoin is, watch my video What is Bitcoin which will explain what it is from a high level perspective in under a minute. Let's begin by exploring how the Crypto Compare API works. We can look up a lot of different information about Bitcoin and other altcoins using Crypto Compare. We're only going to concern ourselves with the current price right now, but we can always look up historical information. We can look up the different exchanges. We could calculate the difference in price between exchanges and do a lot of different things like that. For this video, we're going to look at the current price, which means we're going to use the base URI, the api.cryptocompare.com slash data slash price. Now, there are a number of different parameters. Two of them are required. FSYM, which stands for from symbol, and TSYMS, to symbol. If we look on the site here, these are the different parameters that are available. The required parameters, from symbol, to symbol, they're both strings. It's a pretty basic API call. We're going to provide the symbol of the price that we want to get, and then we're going to provide the unit that we want the price in. So let's do an example. Use our base URI here, cryptocompare.com forward slash data forward slash price. If we navigate there, it's going to give us a JSON response, a response of type error, and it's going to say from symbol parameter seems to be missing. So it's going to tell us what the problem is. We do not have a from symbol. So let's say from symbol Bitcoin. We want to get the price of Bitcoin. Again, it's going to give us an error because we did not provide the two symbol parameter. So next we'll provide a two symbol. We'll use an ampersand, TSYMS, and we'll say USD. And it gives us a JSON response, USD 9287.75. That's the USD value of Bitcoin at this moment. And the API, as you can see, is pretty straightforward. From symbol Bitcoin, we want the USD equivalent. We didn't need an API key. And another thing that I like about the Crypto Compare API is we can use a comma and also provide another symbol like Euro. So now we have the USD value and the Euro of one Bitcoin. And we don't have to stop there. We can also provide a, another value, let's say CNY. That is the Chinese Yuan. And it will give us the, the USD, the Euro, and the Chinese Yuan in one Bitcoin. So it's very simple to use this API. And by simple, I mean straightforward. The documentation is complete and gives you all the information you need to know to issue the requests. And the responses are formatted as you would expect. So now let's create a new Elixir application that allows us to utilize this API so we can create an application that we could do something with the current Bitcoin price. Okay, so I've already made a Phoenix application. Uh, to get to the point I am right now, you can create a Phoenix application and run the, the mix generator with the options no HTML and no brunch because we're just going to be using this as a as an API for getting the Bitcoin price. Let me bring up my application here. I'm going to bring it up in Visual Studio Code so we can run the commands right from the integrated terminal. And to get to the point where I'm at, I've added two dependencies, HTT, HTT poison and poison. This is going to be the HTTP client and a JSON parser for Elixir. So you're going to want to add these dependencies and then run the mix command depths.get. I already have them 
So it's just going to tell me that all my dependencies are up to date. For Crypto Compare, I've created a Bitcoin service dot, that's the parent module, the parent folder here, and Crypto Compare module, import the HTT poison, and I have a module attribute here, which is the base URI and the from symbol Bitcoin. I would like to get a return of the USD and Euro values. So if we wanted to, we could, instead of hard coding these values in there, we could interpolate them dynamically. So we could let the user choose get Bitcoin price in USD or Yuan or Ruble or whatever they would want to get the price in. But just for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to hard code the values in there. Next, we have a single function called price, which uses a case statement to issue a HTT poison get request. And this is similar to the example that I showed earlier. It's going to issue the request to this URL. And then the case statement's going to say, if you get back a status code with 200, oh, the HTTP, the HTT poison library will return a tuple with the first element being OK upon a successful request. So if the request is successful, and the status code is 200, then we want the body to be bound to this body verb. And then we're going to use poison decode to decode the JSON, and we're going to pass in body. We're not going to do any error handling right now. We're just going to assume that it's going to be successful. So at this point, we can try this out in IEX. Now, one thing, if you, if you don't know, at this point, in order to use our module, we will need to call Bitcoin service dot crypto compare. And then now we have access to this module, we can run the function price like this. But we might not want to type that every time. It would be nice if it was already aliased for us so we didn't have to alias it. So it would be much nicer if we could say, crypto compare because we know that that's the module we want to work with and we want to use the price function but it's not going to allow us to do that so one thing that we can do is create in the in the root directory we can create a file called uh, it's a hidden file iex.exs and then there we can use our aliases uh, such as alias Bitcoin service crypto compare and now if I restart IEX now I should be able to run that command crypto compare dot price and it should work okay so now it's giving me the euro and the USD price for Bitcoin and if we wanted to bind these to variables we can use this And we could say that we know that we're going to get back a euro and we could call whatever the number is euro and we know that we're going to get back USD and we could call whatever the number is USD and let's use lowercase here so euro and USD and we already ran the command, but we can access the output of our last command in IEX by using the V minus one. That's gonna bind our variables that we created, Euro and USD to the values. So now we could say something like USD, and it's gonna give us the USD dollar value of one Bitcoin. We can say Euro, it's gonna give us the, the Euro value of one Bitcoin. So now we have an application where we can at any time call and get the price of Bitcoin. I really think that this is the easiest way to probably go about um, gathering Bitcoin information and creating an application. So I'm going to leave this video at this point here. I think this is a good start for a Bitcoin application. If you guys have any ideas of what you'd like to see, just leave a comment and I can go through and show you how to create that. 
also I wanted to take a moment and thank everyone that has subscribed and liked the videos that I've been posting. I don't post as often as I used to, um, but if I keep getting subscribers and people are liking the content and people want me to continue to post, then I might start making more videos and posting them more frequently. But I definitely wanted to make sure that I acknowledge the people that have subscribed and and posted some positive comments. Um, I wanted to thank you guys. So until next time, take care.